of the games. It, it, it's playoff time. It sets a marathon this season. Just your thoughts and one day away from this big match tomorrow. I think the players are ready. I think the fans are ready. And us as coaches, we're ready too. I mean, it's been a long break. It seems like this break, this particular international break, seems like it's been a long time. I think some of that, Chris, is the build up to the excitement of playoffs, you know, watching games over the weekend. You know, I'm sorry for my good friend Gonzalo, you know, Portland. Minnesota entertaining, Philly entertaining. I mean, some good games to watch over the weekend. So that gets you, you know, excited for Tuesday as well. We like, we like our process. I mean, I haven't veered too far off the process. We did a little bit more uh, in our film today just to go over all of the little details. You know, if you watch what happened with Atlanta, you know, they got caught on a short corner kick for the first goal. You know, some of the guys are taking extra, you know, corner kick set pieces out there. Uh, going through the marking on our defending of set pieces. I mean, we did a little bit more just because it's the playoffs. But the actual training, all the on-field stuff was the same. Good. Anybody in particular? <laughs> great, great, good, 100%. Who? He, well, you ask him, he says he's going to be 100%. Um, We'll, we'll see about that one. He'll, he'll be on the bench, I'll tell you that right now. Uh, and I will play him. I'm not afraid to play him. Those games are pushed past the long games. This is the playoffs. Completely different. Good. 100%. Uh, we also make well, you make sure you are aware of him when he's inside the penalty box because he's very good there. You know, he scored the goal against us when we lost there. And I thought, I think it was. Maybe it was Kella, maybe it was Alex, I forget who it was, with Yaimar, and he, he split a seam about this wide to get in on the end of it. So marking inside the box, denying service, and then just being good individual defending. Different, you mean Jordan Morris using him differently? Uh, I'm not sure of the question, Jada. I'm going to use Jordan Morris in the fashion that best suits him and best suits the team, which, you know, he's going to play. And he's going to play hard. And he's going to play fast with determination. <clears throat> he's going to be ready. Well, it's only benefited the guys that were injured. It hasn't better benefited the guys that had, you know, 10 training days with no games. I mean, for them, they're getting a little antsy. But it certainly has helped the injured guys. Ryan, last game, the importance of the balance of discipline and play in your game and then also making adjustments in-game. How critical is that to play on game? Yeah, I think that'll, <clears throat> that'll, be, that'll be important, Maz. You know, who we start, how we start, guys coming back on injury, how long can they play? Some guys are on minute restrictions. I mean, those are the things that you kind of got to figure out. So some of those in-game decisions will be tactical. Some of them will be medical. And so how do we kind of shuffle the group around to make sure that everybody plays and plays effectively without risking injury? That's the challenge. 
talk about how guys are handled, right? So then, what's the messaging from guys in that locker room, the leaders, to step up and make sure that nobody goes, goes over or, or make sure that everybody plays kind of within themselves, despite the answer? Well, I think I have a pretty veteran group. I mean, the guys that we're going to start certainly get it. There will be butterflies. Actually, there should be butterflies. There should be a little bit of butterflies before the referee blows the whistle. And then that turns into adrenaline, and that helps them in the first 10 minutes of the game. And then hopefully you get a soccer match. And then they, they settle in. They do what they know they can do. They play with confidence. You know, some of the subtle messaging, if you guys want to know, I mean, you know, it's always connect your first pass. You know, simplify your game the first 10 minutes. You know, just try and find some rhythm to the game. Those are all the things that we as coaches tell them early in the match just so that we can establish, you know, a little bit of confidence, a little bit of rhythm. Win your first 50-50 duel. Win your first header. Win your first tackle. You know, some of those things can propel you to have a little bit more confidence throughout the match. So then with that 10, 15 minutes to start there, then how important is adjustment after that just to see kind of how the game is shaking out, especially in the playoff Well, that's the Maz's question. I mean, look, there's no break at 15 minutes. It's not football where after one quarter we can make adjustments or, you know, it's not, it's not like that. So the players have to make those adjustments on the field. And I feel that that's always been one of the strengths of my team. They are always good. Soccer is a very fluid game. And I can draw up all the extra stuff we did on film, but what if RSL is missing one of their key guys? Or what if you know, they change formations? Or what if we go up a goal? How does that change the tactics? How do we, what do we change tactics if we go down a goal? I mean, those are always in-game adjustments that the players have to make. How important is Freddie Ward been in the last couple of weeks to be ready for our team? Good. I mean, he's got good intel on his former team. <laughs> he knows the players, too. You know me, look, you, you guys know me well enough to know, but, you know, there's tactics, there's, you know, all of, all of those things are critical, they're important. But players are who they are. Coaches try and get your players into a good system that fits 10 guys working, 11 guys working together, but individually. So Freddie has gotten me a lot of insight on how those players as individuals are and how can we, you know, get after them or make them feel uncomfortable or make them lose a little bit of confidence. And all of those little details are very critical. Coaching Well, we want to we want to make sure again the messaging is, you know, like I've said, it's it's, you know, we're at home. We're going to come out on the front foot. We'll press high, we'll do our normal kind of stuff that we try and do at home. And then you know, again, we have a veteran team. We want to use the crowd. Hopefully it starts raining. It's nice now, Jada, that it's not raining, but let's hope it rains and it's windy and it's cold and we can get after them. It's playoffs. I love all of that. What do you tell uh, us about um, trying to prevent you know, maybe unnecessary yellow cards in the, in the last couple of playoffs? So I'm not worried about that. Not worried about it? Not at all. I don't care what we have to do. We have to win this game. We'll worry about stuff. The thing that goes season long is always, what do you get the yellow card for? Is it for goal celebrations? Is it for arguing with the referees? All of those things, uh-uh, don't fly. Referees, you can't control them. All you can do is control yourself. That's been the messaging since I've been here. Guy has to make a tackle, it's a yellow. Okay, fine, fair enough. But no stupid yellows. Love to see it. Did you see the goals? Yeah. I mean, great atmosphere, great goals. University of Washington. I guess that's one Husky program that's doing okay. Well, I heard there was some controversy there. 
his daughter wasn't able to take the fifth penalty kick. That's what I was wondering. Well, if it goes to penalty kicks, I'm getting my best guys up first. <laughs>